Um, oh yeah, Ray-Bans. We could eventually make something that would look just like a pair of sunglasses that would be able to give you this kind of image on the inside. Um, now this, obviously, once again, everyday typical use, not that practical, but it would be really awesome. Um, in terms of engineering, however, this has uh, enormous practical uses in terms of seeing where circuits are failing, um, these kind of images are used in preventative maintenance or finding problems before they become a really big problem. Um, and then, well, you know, also it's just really cool. Uh, you can see if someone has a fever without actually touching them, so on and so forth. Or you could even have those Ray-Bans give you a night vision image. Um, there's, there's limitless possibilities to what we can do with this. And now, just imagine for a minute, if you start off with something like the Armatron, you know, that just has a few manipulators, uh, nano, nanoparticle manipulators and so on, and then you download the plans for something better on the internet, and then you end up, once again, with something a little bit more sophisticated, like this, and then you were able to use that to build something like this. And all you need is the raw materials, which you can get, you know, by the ton, literally, um, at the junkyard for very, very, uh, very cheap. It's just we haven't developed the technology yet to make that a reality. However, given the rate at which science is going, I think that that will be possible soon, um, very soon. And also, with the, the freedom of information on the Internet, I know that if I had the ability to do these things at home, I probably would never work again. I'd sit at home developing these kinds of things. Um, I'd you know, develop a, a greenhouse or something, um, you know, a self-maintaining greenhouse, I'd, you know, build the plans for that and I'd have all my food that way and recycle all my own water and, you know, all using this nanotech which will be more than possible um, probably within 20 to 50 years, hopefully closer to 20 years. Um, so I'd have, you know, my own self-sustaining house and I'd get a bunch of people together, you know, a lot of fellow engineers and scientists and we'd figure out how to make, you know, the, the cutting edge technology, uh, you know, all these brand new things, and, and nothing in the future is going to look uh, complex. Um, I've already seen this trend happening, you know, things are looking simpler, their, their practical application and their functionality is simpler, however the complexity, the internal complexity is getting, is getting greater. Um, and so things, you know, once again we might have droids, we might have um, you know, sky cars or really fancy ray bands or clothes that that can detect you know anything about you, um, or nano machines that will actually be swimming through your blood, um, you know, f helping fight cancer and you know helping heal heal your body and maybe even replacing bad genes because um, you know genes don't make you sick unless they're broken. Um, so we can we are being able to find those with greater efficiency now. Um, and so the, the possibilities are endless, and I see all this happening. You know, five years ago, almost none of this existed. Um, and now we have all these concepts, we have this direction, and we're experimenting and we're figuring out how to do it. Um, we're figuring out the practical ways of doing these things. And I think this probably scares a lot of people, because what's to keep you or me from, you know, designing and building, you know, the next great gun? and manufacturing them in mass from our own, you know, backyard. Um, and that would be a problem, absolutely. And I don't know how we would address that yet. However, once the technology is there, it can't be controlled indefinitely. I mean, look at Napster. You know, as soon as the internet exploded, um, it was open source technology that was shared. Um, and that's what most of this would be, uh, open source technology. You know, I share the plans and you know you have your own personal little armatron build it and then that you know it you get uh, progressively more sophisticated until you are building your own sky car your your own house your own cars um, you know with these devices that you just downloaded the plans for that you know these guilds that's that's what I would like to call um, if I ever if this is if this technology is realized in my lifetime um, I'm gonna get a, a guild together of people that uh, have a like mind and want to develop these things and, and we're going to, to, to design this stuff and, and give the plans away for free because I see this as the facilitator for the next 
uh, evolution of humanity. Um, you know, instead of having to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for nanotechnology, you know, it, it could be life-saving. You know, a medical tricorder, you can just download it. And, you know, this, this medical tricorder will, and I, I hate to use sci-fi terms, but that's, it's, a, it's a precedent for something that should be possible in the future. Um, be able to tell you exactly what's wrong with you, uh, tell you exactly what you need to fix it, um, and then you know you go back to your nano factories and it can manufacture the the solution for you. Um, now, obviously, this is just addressing material costs, um, so that's going to really change economics of the future. However, there's still going to be, I think, um, typical jobs. You know, not everyone is going to want to just sit at home producing their own things, even though. Uh, they will be capable of being much more self-sufficient. Um, you know, that, that is in accord with the green movement going on now. Uh, I've seen a lot more people um, growing their own gardens and doing things on their own, uh, going off the grid is what it's called, um, where they have either a zero carbon footprint or a, a negative carbon footprint, where they're actually, you know, they're uh, they're sequestering more carbon than they're actually putting back into the environment. Um, so there is a lot of practical application for this. Um, it would be very dangerous, however. Uh, then again, the invention of the gun was very dangerous because it enabled one person to kill another person with relative ease. And that technology has gotten better and better. And now, you know, I can apply for a permit and within a week or two have a handgun and I can buy as much ammunition as I want, and anyone, almost anyone can do this, and yet people don't go around killing each other all the time. I mean, yes, murder does happen, uh, but it's not nearly as often as one might have thought. And that, that's kind of like the, um, it's mutual assurance. Um, that, that term was used in the uh, Cold War, mutually assured destruction, which basically, you know, if I can go out and shoot someone, they can go out and shoot me. So. That, that kind of like, you know, it, it's a status quo that it, once we're all on the same page, even though we have these great capabilities, we're not going to use them, you know, against each other like that. Um, so I think that as long as this technology is embraced safely and uh, in a controlled manner, I don't think it'll cause that big of a problem. Instead, I think it'll, uh, it'll really revolutionize the way that we get around and um, the way that we, uh, that we communicate. And, and hopefully it'll, it'll revolutionize the earth as a whole and, and maybe even help us get off the earth and, and start going other places um, but that that's that's a little bit further reaching um, I just wanted to address nanotechnology and where I see it going so I hope you enjoyed um, I hope that uh, this information was easy to assimilate for you um, have a nice night